Tumble Mug. When it comes to racing games, my absolute favorite titles usually fall into the arcade racer category. These types of games usually don't take themselves too seriously. They embrace speed, crashing, road rage, massive physics defying jumps. I just, I just love it. And many others did back in the day as well. We've got the titans of the genre, games so iconic that any person who hears the mere mention of these titles is sure to remember the strong feelings of late 90s, early 2000s nostalgia. I'm talking about franchises like Burnout, Need for Speed, Rush, Cruisin', Ridge Racer, and so much more. These games absolutely demanded the attention of both players and passersby alike with their over-the-top antics, frenetic gameplay, and of course, the beautifully brutal car crashes and pileups that were bound to happen. It didn't matter if you were watching someone play in front of an arcade with moving seats and flashing lights, or you were just sitting in your parents' basement huddled around a PlayStation 2, seeing these games made you want to get into the action too. In a world where racing games tend to frequent more on the simulation side of things nowadays, I find myself craving the pure zaniness of arcade racers. There's nothing wrong with simulation games, in fact I'm sure I'd enjoy them especially if I had a VR headset or something, but arcade racers had my heart first and so it's these types of games that I often come back to the most. When I think of arcade racers that seem to be all but forgotten, there are unfortunately plenty to choose from. I could talk about Sega's Hang-On, originally created by Yu Suzuki in 1985, which still holds up today in my opinion. Though the game came out basically a decade before I was born, I tried it for the first time recently while playing Shinmu and fell in love. In fact, when I first played that game, the main protagonist Ryo would often get home late several nights in a row just because I just wanted to run one more race. I could talk about Hydro Thunder, one of my favorite water-based racing games, which unfortunately only lives on spiritually through games like Riptide GP Renegade, which is also a banger by the way, and generally a pretty cheap pickup on the Switch. And yes, even considering that recently some love was given to the franchise in the form of a 99 game, the futuristic arcade series F-Zero still just doesn't get the attention many believe it deserves. So while I do love all these games and will give them their time in the sun one day, today is not that day. Instead, I'd like to talk about Excite Truck, a launch title for the Nintendo Wii that absolutely blew my preteen mind in 2006. I genuinely think that Excite Truck deserves a spot on the list of the all-time best arcade racing games and I'll explain why here. But first, I'd like to touch on a little of the Excite franchise's history as a whole and how the game was initially received upon release. Out of all of Nintendo's franchises that were in desperate need of a sequel, a reboot, or anything at all really, I'm not sure the Excite series was on the top of everyone's lists. It wasn't a completely random rebirth, however. The original Excite Bike, a launch title on the Nintendo Entertainment System, ended up becoming one of the NES's best-selling games, solidifying itself as a classic of the era. Though it wouldn't be until a whole 15 years later that we'd see a sequel to Excite Bike, we did eventually get Excite Bike 64 on, you guessed it, the Nintendo 64. This game built on what Nintendo learned when making Wave Race 64 and was well received by both critics and fans of the series. Wave Race Blue Storm and F-Zero GX both made their way onto the GameCube, but the Excite series didn't get a sequel on that console, unfortunately. However, when it was time to move on to the Wii, Nintendo didn't want to repeat that 15 year time gap, and so in 2006 we saw Excite Truck emerge. Developed by both Nintendo and Monster Games, who had previous experience with various NASCAR titles, Excite Truck was a curious rebranding of the Excite Bike series, and that, along with the fact that it wasn't as much of a hit for the critics as its predecessors were, may have been the reason it didn't sell quite as well as the previous Excite titles. The change of vehicle type meant that some of the longtime fans of the series no longer saw the game that they grew up with, and this was even more so the case with the game's sequel, Excitebots, which sold about half as many copies as Excitetruck, by the way. In addition, it's worth mentioning that many who got the Wii around the holidays were likely too busy with Wii Sports or The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess to care about a racing game that looked rather generic and uninspired by comparison. However, as we have learned many times via the aid of retrospection and hindsight, just because a game is initially not praised by critics or perhaps doesn't sell well on launch, that doesn't mean it's necessarily a bad game. There are always other factors at play. Luckily, I was someone who was interested in Excite Truck from the start. 
Right off the bat, anyone trying Excite Truck will notice just how intense the feeling of speed is. This game is fast, and really the only Nintendo racing game that rivals this one's sense of speed is F-Zero. It's much faster than what we see in games like Mario Kart or Wave Race. This is in large part due to the boosting system in the game. By taking advantage of the many types of boosts available, you can activate speed boosts that literally light your vehicle's wheels on fire as it careens ahead of the pack and zips around corners. You can do regular boosts anytime you wish, but you need to make sure to watch your engine's heat gauge to ensure it doesn't overheat and stall. I really like games that employ some sense of resource management for you to look out for. The previously mentioned F-Zero makes great use of its YOU GOT BOOST POWER mechanic to keep players on their toe. <laughs> Sorry, that was so fun. <laughs> F-Zero's boosting mechanic to keep players on their toes, and countless other arcade racing games tend to give you a speed boost via nitrous in your tank or nailing a drift or something like that. What I like about Excite Truck's boost system, though, is it isn't really a finite system. You have a lot more control over how much you use your boost than you do with most other racers, and with good resource management and attention to the terrain, you can efficiently boost through a majority of the track. Running through a splash of water will cool down your engine almost instantly, which gets you right back into top boosting shape, and if you land cleanly on the ground after performing a jump, or if you do a boost at just the right time right off of a ramp, you will cool down your engine while you're boosting. The boosting system not only rewards you as a player by giving you the edge in a race in the form of speed, but it also keeps you constantly engaged throughout the duration of the race because you want to use your boost as often as possible without overheating, which is pretty easy to do. This works in tandem with the map designs, which usually have multiple splitting paths to make sure you're always paying attention. When I'm flying through the air off of a massive jump, I'm not only just taking in the sights, I'm actively scanning which part of the track may be best for me to travel down next since there are often forks in the road. I'm looking for power-ups, I'm looking for the next spot that can net me some more points, I'm seeing if there's another ramp that I can land on to chain myself into another jump, and so on. I'm making decisions like, perhaps I should cut my jump short here so I can land squarely on the ground for a nice boost and get ahead of the other suckers flying through the sky, or maybe I should keep soaring to see if I can land in that distant spot over there that has a clearing of trees. Maybe it's a shortcut. You're constantly kept on your toes, and so even while spending just a few seconds in the air, all of these types of thoughts are racing through your mind thanks to the game's speed. And this brings me to the next element of the gameplay that I enjoy quite a bit, and that's the serious airtime you can get in it. A movie I thoroughly enjoyed as a kid growing up was 2005 Sky High, and I'll never forget the school bus that they get on to get to the high school. You know, the bus that absolutely scares the shit out of the students by flying through the air at high speed thanks to some hidden rocket boosters or something. Little did I know that a year later I'd be doing that exact same thing race to race in Excite Truck. The sense of scale on some of these maps is legitimately impressive, especially for a launch title Nintendo Wii game. You can absolutely soar through the air if you've saved up enough boosts, and the more time you spend flying through the air, the more stars you start to accumulate, which essentially act as this game's version of style points. Once you get your first taste of a 5 star jump and you've gotten some serious hang time, you want to do it again and again and again. There's this brief moment of reprieve that you get to take from the hecticness that just took place a second ago on the racetrack, and suddenly, as you glide through the air and the next unknown portion of the map starts to unfold in front of you, the music dissipates, and all that's left is the sound of the wind in your truck's engine. And once you do touch ground, hopefully with a boosted landing, the music kicks right back in and you're ready to get back into the chaos. The push and pull dynamic of this is just astounding to me, and there were moments when replaying it even recently and flying through the air that I would be holding my breath and not even realize it. I mentioned it briefly, but it's worth diving into a little more here now. Excite Truck does have a style point system, which is ultimately the deciding factor in how good of a grade you'll get at the end of the race. This means that you can actually finish the race in first place, but if you just drove around the course without taking any risks to achieve this, there's a good chance you won't receive that coveted S ranking that you're likely looking for. Conversely, you could theoretically finish in second or third place at the end of a race and still snag an A or maybe even an S rating if you played stylishly enough throughout. 
It's worth mentioning though that first place will net you an additional 50 stars, while second place only gives you 25, and the returns continue to diminish as you rank lower and lower, so there is a strong incentive to place high in the race. The stars you earn in this game are given through a variety of methods, and you can gain more than one star at once depending on how well you perform any of these actions. As I mentioned a second ago, you gain stars for how long you manage to keep your vehicle in the air. But you can also receive additional stars by doing tricks in the air, or by drifting around corners, by chaining jump combos one after the other in quick succession. However, my favorite ways to get stars in this game though are often the more risky and often violent methods. In true arcade racer fashion, you are incentivized to crash, and it is lovely. If you collide with another vehicle, you're awarded with a truck smash and granted a star or two. If you hit them especially hard and just absolutely throttle them by flying through them with a full speed boost, you might get rewarded with a super truck smash and 5 stars at once. These kinds of collisions usually knock them off course and can net you an advantage in the race too, so there are plenty of reasons to want to do this. You have to be careful though. If the other racer is boosting and you're not going too fast, it could actually cause you to crash out, especially if you're driving a smaller vehicle. Smaller vehicles do have some advantages to them as well though. A situation where a vehicle like the Firefly shines over the truck featured on the game's cover art for example, aptly named the Boulder by the way, is that anytime you're trying to get a solid tree run, it's better to drive a smaller vehicle. Tree runs are arguably the best way to earn a bunch of stars at once. With a healthy amount of both luck and skill, you can earn upwards of 20 to 30 or perhaps even more stars at once by securing multiple tree runs in a row. A tree run occurs when you are able to drive very close to a row of trees without crashing. This usually involves you threading yourself through a tight corridor of trees on either side like a needle. This risk reward element is huge here, even more than what you see with truck smashes because you can get so many stars at once if you pull it off. However, if you mess up and collide with a tree, you're obviously going to crash. Thankfully, if you do crash, you're still rewarded with a star and you're prompted to press the gas button as fast as you can to launch yourself right back into the race. It has a much faster respawn system than something like Mario Kart, and so the crashing system goes hand in hand with aiding both the game's sense of speed and the high emphasis on risk reward. But easily one of the most unique elements of Excite Truck, and possibly the thing that really pushes this game from good to great for me personally, are its power ups. There are only two types of collectibles that you can find on the map, which might seem limiting on the surface, but there is actually a ton of variety with one of these collectibles specifically. See this exclamation point icon? If you manage to grab one while racing, there are a whole slew of things that can happen. Sometimes rings will appear in the air right past an upcoming ramp that you're driving on, and if you can fly through all of them, you'll manage to snag 5 stars really easily. Someone should have told Superman 64 that flying through rings can actually be fun. But the real excitement, pun intended, comes from the terrain shifting in this game. Now, when I first picked this game up, I think I rented it from Blockbuster back in the day and then eventually went on to own a copy for myself. I wasn't aware that this was even a thing until I saw it firsthand. You can probably imagine how mind-blowing it was for me as a kid to see the world literally shifting around me. Sometimes the exclamation points will cause volcanoes to erupt, cause the ground to sink or flood over with water, form a massive ramp in front of you out of nowhere that Tony Hawk would be proud of, or cause buildings to crumble around you and your opponents. When I revisited this game all these years later, this was the part I was most worried about seeing play out again. I was worried that this would be one of those features that was graphically impressive at the time, but maybe dated by today's standards. Well, I'm pleasantly surprised to report that it was just as cool to see this year to me as it was back then when I was a kid. Some of the things you encounter when you hit these exclamation points are really pretty insane, and the physics behind the game's terraforming mechanic are pretty impressive too. Let's say that you're in 4th or 5th place, and ahead of you is a modest sized jump, but before that is an exclamation point power up. If you manage to hit that power up at just the right moment, there's a good chance that ramp will greatly extend out into the air, and if you had timed it right, you can actually launch the trucks in front of you through the air like a little kid deciding he's done playing with his Hot Wheels now. This will send them way off course, it's hilarious, it's satisfying, nets you some truck throw stars, and usually gives you a big advantage in the race all at once. The other power-up, while not as exciting, is still a blast in this game, and I feel like these items are always positioned in the best spots on the track to serve their purpose. This is the POW icon. 
When I first saw this, I admittedly thought that it would for sure act like a POW block from Mario Brothers and cause some sort of damage to any trucks on the ground around me, and that would have been cool, but in Excite Truck, the POW icon is something more akin to the star power-up in the Mario Kart games. Similar to what happens when you get the Star Man, you become invincible and receive a speed boost. It's essentially like going full speed with infinite boosting. This means that pretty much any collision with another truck is going to give you a super truck smash, and this also means that you can run through trees without any issues. While it is satisfying to reduce trees into sawdust, sometimes these POW icons are placed conveniently right in front of a line of trees that would be perfect for a tree run. This means that you now have a good opportunity to very quickly earn a massive amount of stars if you manage to not hit any of them. But if you do, you still have no risk of crashing due to your invulnerability, so it's a win-win either way. I thought it was also worth mentioning that your Wii Remote will emit sounds while rings or power-ups are picked up, which legitimately adds to the game's sense of immersion, in my opinion. While I'm talking about the Wii Remote sounds really quick, you also get a very satisfying cheering crowd noise anytime you pull off a super version of a trick, like a tree run, truck smash, or ring run, and this is always appreciated. And that brings me to the last element of Excite Truck that I really wanted to make sure I highlighted, and that's the game's overall presentation, in both visual design as well as sound. The Nintendo Wii is a console that's home to quite a variance in quality when it comes to its games, and that's probably the nicest way I can put it. For every first-party Nintendo title or the occasional third-party game with decent to great graphics, you've got a whole host of other games that look bland, overuse the bloom effect that was all the rage during this time, or just straight up ugly. When I think about the best looking games on the system, I usually think of titles with a strong art direction, usually a cel shaded art direction, and these are games like Okami, the Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi series, No More Heroes, or Mad World. And then there are games that Nintendo really flex their technical muscles on, like Super Mario Galaxy or Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, which still look great to this day, even in their original non-HD forms. These are pretty common examples that are well known for looking great during the time of release, and they've aged pretty well on that front. But I remember thinking Excite Truck looked really good, better than maybe it even deserved to at that time. And similar to its terraforming and physics related gimmicks, I was worried that I wouldn't think the same thing once I revisited this game later. Again, I was happy to be wrong with that assumption. Excite Truck has a really nice attention to detail that wasn't really present in co-developer Monster Games' previous titles, and this is perhaps due to Nintendo's higher budget. I'm glad we had some Nintendo money put into this thing because to me, this game is still one of the Nintendo Wii's better looking titles. All of the trucks have a nice amount of detail to them. Their metallic bodies reflect the environment around them, and if you perform well enough with a singular truck for a handful of races, you can actually unlock some alternate paint jobs for the vehicles. The particle effects, such as the flames on screen when boosting, the rain, snow, lightning, and other weather effects, the dust kicked up as you hit the trails, the pieces flying off of cars when crashing, and the motion blur when boosting or soaring through the air at high speeds are all so clean and surprisingly realistic for an otherwise cartoony game. There never appeared to be much, if any, slowdown in the game either, even when the environment was morphing around me or when an entire forest lit on fire, buildings were crumbling at a rapid pace, and so on. I have seen some criticisms levied towards the game's maps, which many people regard as samey, but I have to somewhat disagree. All of the environments in the game are loose interpretations and amalgamations of places you'd see in China, Scotland, Mexico, Fiji, Finland, or Canada. So with only six different regions, it's somewhat unlikely that you remember the name of a random Canadian track on a given cup in the game, for example. But the changes present in each variation of these maps are in and of themselves memorable. I first played this game at 12 years old, and revisited it for the first time again at 28, so a full 16 years later, I noticed that at several points through my most recent playthrough, I was still able to predict what part of the track was coming next because I remembered some of these specific elements of the map all these years later. For example, the massive curve around a pond in one of the rainy Scotland maps that you encounter while doing a series of bunny hops across the rolling hills that eventually leads to you driving over a bridge attached to a castle or the moment in Fiji where I collected the exclamation icon and caused the volcano in the background to erupt and send molten lava rocks hurtling towards the ground. There is so much detail crafted into every map that even though you may not remember the specific names of each map you travel on, like you would with something like F-Zero's Mute City or Mario Kart's Coconut Mall, you will remember a lot of the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay and set pieces. 
The attention to detail for a game that was seen by many as little more than a tech demo for Nintendo to introduce some driving motion controls to the masses is astounding. And one last thing I wanted to highlight in regards to this game's level of detail comes from the Fiji map. If you collide with a palm tree that has coconuts on it, you'll see the coconuts actually fall down and get knocked off during the slow-mo replay of your collision. I was shocked to see that the coconuts actually had physics on them and would bounce a little bit once they hit the sand. It's such a small detail, but it's things like this that you may not notice immediately and I didn't notice until all these years later. Coconut physics on one specific map aren't really something that Nintendo and Monster Games had to spend time on, but they did, and these kinds of things are things that I really appreciate and think shouldn't go unnoticed. The game menu's UI, while not flashy, is very clean in my opinion, and I'm not surprised to see that it was pretty much lifted and reused entirely for the game's sequel, Excitebots. This is where you first get introduced to the game's music, and while some of the tracks admittedly feel like something I would hear on Pawn Stars or any run-of-the-mill car show, Excite Truck has some real bangers too, especially for any fans of those big 80s hard rock type jams or anyone looking for something similar to something like Iron Maiden. There is some serious artistry and virtuosity going on here in some of these tracks. I've been a musician for several years, and there are a lot of songs on here that I couldn't even hope to perform without a lot of practice. After you're introduced to the title's main opening track, you pick your vehicle and your course, and you're greeted to the course preview screen, with pretty much the game's only peaceful, ambient type of track. And this track is actually one of my favorite songs in the game, despite its short-lived presence, because it's a song that I feel like would feel right at home in Wii Sports. It's hard to describe, but the Wii Menu, Wii Shop Channel, and Wii Sports all have this particular flavor to their sonic landscape, and this song fits right into that mold in my opinion. Though all the tracks are worth hearing at least once, if you're not a fan of this music at all, you can also put songs on your SD card and listen to your own music in this game, and I think it's worth noting that, at least to my knowledge, Excite Truck and Endless Ocean are the only titles on the Wii that have this feature. While this is not as big of a deal nowadays, considering that we live in a time where pretty much all consoles can connect to Spotify with the click of a button, in 2006 this was such a cool feature to me, and all these years later, I can admit that one of the main contributing factors to me knowing all the words to Third Eye Blind's brilliant but extremely wordy semi-charmed life was Excite Truck, because I absolutely wore that song out while playing this game as a kid. So I think that about covers it. I've talked about this game long enough, but not because I just like to hear myself talk. Excite Truck is one of those games that I think has unfortunately become a bit lost due to time, and I wanted to give an in-depth retrospective on the game because I truly think it deserves it and I hope it receives more recognition in the future. Especially after seeing how good the game looks running through Dolphin, I'd love to see an HD re-release of it one day, perhaps in a combo package with its sequel Excitebots. I think that's a bit unlikely though, and admittedly I do get a little sad sometimes when I think about the fact that the 15 year time gap between the release of the original Excitebike on the NES and its sequel on the Nintendo 64 must have felt so long for the fans of the original, yet here we are in 2024 at the time of this video's release, and it's been just about 15 years since Excitebike Bots first released on the Nintendo Wii in 2009. At least I still have an original Wii that plays these games no problem, and I even have them backed up through an external hard drive thanks to soft modding, so if my discs break or the disc drive fails, I can still play these games on original hardware. Despite the sales numbers not being too great, there is a good game here, and I'm glad to say that all these years later, Excitrux still holds up. It's just as good as I remember, and remains one of my favorite arcade racers of all time. Through whatever means available, I suggest you try this game out if you haven't, because it's truly a gem that never got its time in the sun. If you're still here, thank you for taking the time to listen, and as always, stay humble.